one. This is the Drew Spirian Show, the show that's 80% combat sports and 20% everything else. The show is brought to you by KRT uh, Karate Tips and Tricks with Wesley Jensen and Jaron Stringer. The Kyokushin Shuffle with Sensei Pat Pinto, who has his book, Forever the Student, picking the greatest minds of Kyokushin or other striking martial arts and what gets them to excel at their craft. And Moments Management with Nima Safapur. If you're an upcoming MMA fighter, whether you do any discipline of martial arts and you want to go pro, Moments Management will give you the ins and outs of how to be a professional and how to put your money and good investments for while you have a fighting window for your fighting career. And without further ado, I'm joined today by one of the biggest guests in Kyokushin. He is a Xi'an. He is a successful businessman. He's been on many podcasts. He has his own show, Real Talk with Scott Heaney, Senpai Scott Heaney of the Marshall Way blog. I am thrilled and honored to be joined today by owner of Ronin Dojo, Xi'an Terry Burkett. Welcome, Xi'an. Hey, Drew. How you doing? For you, we managed to pin each other down and get on it. <laughs> it's, been, it's been such a, it's been quite an, uh, not an, it's been, it's all about timing. You know, that's what it is with these, uh, especially when. I'm in Canada, like Scott is, or as you say, Alaska. It's just the time zone difference. By the way, Scott's in Canada. We just like to say Alaska because it snows where he yeah, is. Yeah, Alaska, Canada, same thing, same thing. <laughs> it really is. It really is. So um, so how's it been for you guys? Like, you know, you've been pretty busy, you know, with Real Talk. Uh, you have some big business projects that are coming out that are going to be uh, really big for 2021. What's going on with uh, Ronan Dojo lately? Well, Ronin Dojo itself is obviously shut. The lockdown, all the gyms are closed here. We're attached to a gym. So we're shut at the moment. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm not training. So I'm still doing the Ronin training outdoors, in the garden, here, there, wherever we manage to meet up with people. Um, and that sort of leads me to one of the projects we're going to be doing for the Backstreet page and our Real Talk uh, channel is I'm going to start a series of Ronin training videos going to be this training sort of unusual training outdoors like I tend to use rivers trees mountains rather than I say I go to the gym when the gyms was open but when I was younger I used to go up in the mountains and just lift rocks dig holes cut trees proper rocky shit what I used to love doing so I'm just going to do a, a series of videos in our channel on on Ronin training that's awesome. I really love that, especially the importance of getting out. You find a way in Kyokushin, as they say, you always find a way to accomplish. And I really think to bring that, uh, that I don't even want to say it's, un, it's like unmethodical, but it's just traditional in a sense, because how did you think Sosai trained in the forest? I mean, look, uh, he trained in the forest, so you're bringing that. And, you know, I think with this lockdown, people are realizing, why would I need a gym when I could just go outside and do stuff? Yeah, it's cold, but you find a way. It is. The, the thing with this lockdown is everybody started buying up gym equipment and weights and kettlebells and stuff. So a lot of people who used to go to the gym regularly got some weights in the gardens. Like my my partner's a fitness instructor as well as a firefighter. So, excuse me. So we've got weights in the house. So we can train in the house with the weights that we've got. And as the gyms reopened, they, people were saying, no, I'm, not, I'm not going back to the gym. Don't miss it. I'm training in the house. I can train in the garden. Mm -hmm. It's very true. It is. And and go on, go on. No, no, no. You're, I, you, like, I didn't know you were uh, going to say something there, but uh, your point is more important because I want to hear what you were saying where people were saying, I don't need the gym. I like the home or the garden. Mm. And what you just touched on then is that uh, sort of used to train outdoors, the camps, you know, the winter camps, the summer camps, outdoor training. I think that's being lost. People are not training outdoors as much as they used to. Um, and in in Wales, the Celts, the Druids, we uh, there's a close connection to nature, and there's a close connection to the woods, the trees, the land. And I've grown up in the country, so I've always been, you know, ever since I was two year old, I've always been out running around, no shoes or socks on in the grass, in the fields, in the trees. I've grown up doing that. And I find it very, very spiritually connecting, mm -hmm. which is why part, like when we do the Misogi, the waterfall training, or we go out and we train in the woods, 
it's just settling. It's reconnecting you with uh, with Mother Nature because there's a big connection between between humans and nature. We've lost that connection. We're in shoes all the time, walking on concrete all the time, pavements, in and out of offices, in and out of the car. People really get out into nature and reconnect. Mm -hmm. It's very true. I love what I love, and I definitely agree with that. Um, you've also, uh, now you've also been on, shout out to Sensei Pat Pinto. You've been on his show and, uh, you're an, yeah, you're an yeah. entrepreneur Shook yourself. Shuffle. Yeah. Great show, by the way. Like, I know like he's kind of like waiting until things calm down. Cause Australia is kind of like topsy turvy with everything as the world is. Um, and you're a business owner yourself. You're an entrepreneur, you know, you've, uh, you're writing not one book, but two books. So how have how has that been going for you and what are those the names of those of those books so people can know well the books are very much in the pipeline i'm still writing them at the moment um but uh and i've, I've always wanted to write a book i've always wanted to write a book on karate but it's just the time to do it as well and i think when we had the first lockdown let's say when we had the first lockdown i was as busy as ever because as you said i'm a I've got an entrepreneurial spirit. So if I'm told you cannot work, you cannot earn money, I'll find another way to do it. Mm -hmm. So we revamped the company, we changed certain things, and we, we've been flat out. We've just been flat out on it. Um, and the book, both the books have started, but because I'm quite, I'm, I'm all over the shop anyway. I'm very eclectic. My mind is doing a million things at once. So I'm writing one book and I'm probably doing about five chapters at once and I just keep popping back and forth the chapters and then I'm like, you know what, as I'm writing this, I'm going to start writing another book on business. So then I start writing another book on business and again, hopping back and forth the chapters. I enjoy the writing, but as I've said before, I, I'm not an academic based guy. Uh, so the sitting down and making sure I'm writing and doing it, uh, I've got to be in the mood to do it so it's a slow process mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's very true and how is it and how do you feel um because this is what i've noticed too like with what you do you promote what it means to be a better man in martial arts and i think that's really good because a lot of men today like they i feel that they're lacking purpose and i feel what you're doing like your order of man which is really cool how do you feel these books that you're going to write are going to help impact the like men or you know tip the typical nice guy syndrome you know where they lack that they lack purpose but they see what you're doing and they can be a better man so what's your aim of like using these books to help men mold men to be the to be what they're capable of being in society um, I think it's a, you know, I'm no expert on this and I'm certainly not a finished project, as my wife will tell you, <laughs> certainly not the finished product. It's a working process. Um, and I think the, the karate book, I mean, karate is my thing. I've, I've got a good amount of knowledge of karate. I, I was, it meshed with me, you know, I've been doing it since I was 10. So almost 30 years I've been doing karate. I've seen a lot, learned a lot, and, and I've got my own views on things as well. Certainly with my background in security and close protection, I've really put these things to the test, and I've found out what works, what doesn't work. So uh, the book I'm writing is a kind of a mixture of karate technique applied, this is how it would work, mixed in with my philosophies on things, and then intermittently stories about when I've used this particular thing. That's really awesome. I think that's really cool because I think, you know, as Patrick said, we have to raise the bar of Kyokushin, but we also have to modernize it. And I think, you know, that too much of a traditional approach has been kept and that's kind of stunted the expansion and growth of the art. And, you know, I understand people say, well, so sorry, this, so sorry. Terry, you have to sometimes as you, as what I took from what you just said is you have to bend the bar in order to raise it and get expansion. And I think that's amazing. So uh, give me an example of like what you feel is one technique that kind of is rubbish, but based on your experience, you've used it and this works and why. So I'd love to hear one example of that. Well, techniques, techniques are down to people's interpretations of them as well. So don't forget, let's say for argument's sake, uh, Hibak and Mawashi, 
mm-hmm. coming there. Now this technique there, keep coming around Karaka Mawachi there. Now a lot of people, they just look at it as, oh, well, you're hitting Korakin, coming into the back. Hitting. Someone's in front of you, and you're coming around and hitting the back of their head. A lot of people look at that technique. But Karaka Mawashi is also a hook. So if I'm trying to hook someone with a hook to the face there, you've only got a certain range that you can catch them with. If you're too far away, you're just going to clip with the knuckles as you're hitting. Now, if I'm sort of this distance, I can just manage to catch the jaw. If I turn the hand over to Uraka Mawashi, I gain another three inches. So this is it's almost like an upside down hook. And it comes around and it hits there with those knuckles catching someone in the jaw. So that's a typical example of a technique that people think they know what they're doing with it, but there's actually another way of, of, of this is actually what it can be used for. This is actually how I've used it. So if someone is just out of range to catch with a nice tight white hook, you turn it over to the Arakam Washi, you've gained another three, four, five inches. So they can get out the range, you catch them. That's, all, that's interesting. And I really think that this book is going to really explain how interpretation is the key here because everybody interprets technique. Or they interpret katas differently, maybe in a kumite. What are they trying to use? Because it's basically high level problem solving where you're kind of having a conversation and you're showing how you interpret the art and, or, and maybe the other person interprets a technique this way. Yeah, and we've got to remember things change. So the katas that we do in Pyokchin, although based on other katas from Shotokan Gojuru, we're doing a completely different version of it. We're doing it with the versions being changed enough so that the original movements don't really fit the kata anymore because the movement has been changed. And that's because someone said, well, I prefer doing this. Like a typical example is a lot of Kyokushin kata, all the kicks are Jordan. Yeah? But, it's, but why are the kicks Jordan? And, and the, as I understand it, our kicks are Jordan is because Sosai liked to see people kicking Jordan. He wanted everybody kicking Jordan, getting their legs up. That's what he liked to see. Now, the practical application isn't there because those original kata, all the kicks are below the belt. They're all down into the legs. So a typical example is sort of Pinan Ni, uh, where you come in, or Pinan Sam, you come in, or Pinan Yon, actually, you do the Yokogeri out to the side, you come in. We do Jordan Yokogeri, Jordan Orake. But it was, it's, it's a Gedan Orake. A Gedan Yokogeri, Kansetsu Geri, into the knee it's meant to be. As you kick into that knee, you knock the arm away with the arm, and then you can grab and throw. They were the original movements to the kata, but of course, if you try and make that fit now by doing a Jordan Yopigiri, it, it will never fit. It can't fit because the, the movement's been changed. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's always changing. And sometimes you're going to get practitioners who just don't have the flexibility because they start at different points in their lives. And I mean, I know plenty of black belts. They're like, they'll tell you, I can't do like a Jodan, like high kick but I'm very good at the low and mid leg kicks. And that's what, the, and that's what I think needs to also be um, accepted because not everyone <laughs> can kick like Van Damme or uh, say Bruce Lee. It's, uh, no. like, it, it's just everyone's anatomy is different. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, I can, the most I can go up to is like to the, to the waist. That's the most I can do based on my flexibility. Mm. We tend to do... The whole kata thing is backwards for us. What we do is we learn a kata, we memorize the movement of the kata, and then, not always, I mean, you should do, but some people, they try to understand what it is they're doing in the kata. What are these movements for? We reverse engineer the kata. Where originally it was, you would learn a two-man drill. So you attack me, I block, I hit, I do this movement. That's our little drill. We practice it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right, how are we going to show, what if my training partner's not here? Okay, well, I can still do the movement on my own. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Practicing the movement on my own. Well, how can I show my friend how to practice this cool little movement? Oh, look, this is how you do it. 
but let's put it into into a pattern for people to remember which then became kata so okay we've got this pattern now i'll show you this pattern this drill so you can practice it on your own and you can show other people how to do it so we're memorizing the movements now along the years the actual two-man drill got forgotten about but only concentrated on learning the pattern of the kata and then the shift went from what we're actually doing in this kata to right is your hand here or here or they mm -hmm. this is what became important or should your hand be like that or should it be like that that's where the emphasis went to and they lost what, what the actual movements were about because they're more concerned with is my finger pointing up or is my finger pointing down on minutia instead of you know what cattle's actually about the two-man drills I think that's why we lose a lot of people because they just get so caught up in these obsessive uh, like minutiae, as you said. And I think if we just brought it back to like a simplistic way of looking at it and looking at the movement, I think people would stay because the katas are, they are, they are, look, they are needed, but we need to find a way to make them more, I would say the word fun in a sense, because I'm not going to, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, listen, I like kumites. And when I had to do my kata classes, it's like being the kid in class that just tries to get by. Like, it's like, okay, I'll do them, but it's like, don't expect much. And it's because they just success. It's like, Drew, your hand needs to be like here. Not, it needs to be here, not here. This is what you're moving at. Why are you doing and this? When you start concentrating on, yeah, when you start concentrating on that crap, um, you, you lose the essence of what the kata is about. And then it becomes about your foot position rather than what are you actually doing in that movement? Mm -hmm. And this is why I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of kata competition. Mm -hmm. um, so katas have morphed over the years. So as we do a kata now, a kata can give you a good kime, good focus, good coordination. It's a good exercise, good memory learning. But if you don't have the understanding of the movements you're doing, what you're doing is a dance. You may as well learn a dance go and learn a choreographed dance routine which is excellent focus excellent fitness flexibility strength balance coordination you learn all of those things when you do a choreographed dance routine so basically that's what your show catter is it's a choreographed dance routine if you don't understand the movements that you're doing you know when i'm doing this movement it looks really nice Actually, what am I doing? I'm grabbing someone and I'm yanking them down and then smashing into them. If you don't have that understanding there, it's just a dance movement. It, it really is. Like, and the other thing too, like, I want to get your opinion on this. Ura is like kata ura, pinan ura. So when I, in my old association, before I became independent, nomad is like my name goes by, uh, we had to do the, the uras for the color belts. And then when I spoke with, um, Michael Zimmerman from uh, IFK Sensei, Michael Zimmerman, he was like, Uras are for the black belts. They are not for the color belts. Like, and that's how it works in IFK. I think every association is different, but Uras tend to be mainly for the, like the, the dance, basically. What, what are your opinion? What's your opinion of the Uras? Well, I mean, it, again, Uras are only for the dance grades. For me, that's bollocks. That's, that's just, that's the, that's the hierarchical, cooperation structure. You only learn this bit when you become a downgrade. Um, and IFK is very structured. Um, I was doing Ura Kathas when I, when I was a green belt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so things changed. Ura Kathas, again, there's no practical defense application to an Ura Kata. Just changing it up. Just mm -hmm. changing things about a little bit making you faster, making you better balanced. Uh, don't forget, Edo um, Geiko moving up and down when you're doing piping and spinning. So instead of just moving up and down punching, you put a spin in place before you move up and down. Now, this is good in a fight situation. It creates confusion with your opponent when you spin as an advance in and you spin as an advance out. But if you do it up and down, up and down, up and down, as Mai Chian did in Hongbu and the Sota, it also makes you faster. So if you're spinning up and down the dojo, putting these spins in, when you don't need the spin, your movement is so much faster. Hmm, that's super interesting. I like, 
how you interpreted that. And yes, I do believe it changes with the URAs because some organizations will say, well, you have to learn the URAs at yellow belt. For you, you did green belt and IFK, they do the dance because I think the structure is very different. And then there's some associations that look at the URAs and they're like, this doesn't even apply. So I get, as you said, it's all about interpretation. Um, and since you're independent, I mean, you know, like, and I'm not trying to like, and I want to ask you from what you've seen of all the different organizations, which, which ones do you think have some of the best structure for the, for the practitioners you feel like in today's day and age? Uh, you say the best structure. Uh, personally, I think Kyokushin has too many katas. There are mm. way too many kata in Kyokushin. Because no one understands them, what they're doing, really. They're all dance routines. And Shan Cameron says the same thing. Too many kata. Now, the karate ka will be suited towards a certain kata. So let's remember a kata is a blueprint. It's a battle plan of a certain way of doing something. Mm -hmm. Now, certain battle plans fit certain sizes, certain builds, certain structures. That's why we've got the different kata. Different scenarios, different types of people. Now. You have to know them all to be able to fit a kata to a student. So the instructor should know a, a good number of kata to fit them to a certain student. But then instead of learning, I think we've got like five kata in Kyokushin, which is a ridiculous amount of kata, to be honest. Um, instead of a student, you say, oh, right, say for argument's sake, uh, Suchi Ho, that's a nice kata, that fits your body type of movement you should concentrate on understanding that kata forget about learning the rest concentrate on that one kata and that doesn't take six months doesn't take a year it'll take a few years concentrate on that one kata and know it know it inside and out know all the movements to it till they become part of you so when something happens bam you've got that movement and you and you can fall into it so I, again you add to answer your question structure um all the ones I have seen, I'll be honest, I think uh, Hanchi Steve Arneal's BKK structure, because that's the structure that I came up on as a kid, as in the, the tenth Q, Jordan, uh, Marote Ski, Jordan Chudan Gedan, Oi Ski, Jordan Chudan Gedan, Jordan Uke, Gedan Brai, Hizigiri, King Giri. That's tenth Q. Done. And then as you go up nine, eight, seven, as you're going up the grades, the sets of techniques are introduced. So, you know, when you were, say, so yellow belt was all the short days, uh, second yellow belt was all the shows, green belt was all the elbows. Um, it was a much better process of learning, to be honest with you. So I, I, I and out of the other ones that I've looked at, the other syllabuses, um, because uh, Shoki Matsui, Kansho Matsui, he changed the syllabus a lot in IKO, because I was in IKO. And what they done was, they brought all the complicated stuff from like brown belt, black belt, and they brought it down to blue belt, yellow belts. Uh, so you had blue belt going for like a Shira uh, all the Jordan kicks. And it's like, well, th there's, there's no process of learning there, really. It, it's too much too soon. So, so personally, I think Steve Arneal's BKK syllabus from 10th to the 3rd Q is the best one for for learning for going through it all developing that's interesting and i really i love how you really broke it down because he is such a significant person uh for kyokushin i mean you know like everywhere you, you mentioned steve arneal oh hanshi arneal he's and now that he's retired i mean he's he's leaving you know in a sense what do you what do you feel his impact is uh is at, on Kyokushin like to you like for the art as a whole? Oh well, yeah. well, to me personally, I was never in the BKK. Mm -hmm. so I I never trained in the Hanshi mm -hmm. I was always with Japan. So I started karate in '92. They had just had the split. So BKK were the BKK, and the dojo that I was in stayed with Japan. So I've always come under Japan. Um, but doesn't I mean I don't know about Daniel, his impact in, in, in karate. In Britain. It was all BKK. So everyone before 92, it was all under Arneal in Britain. 
or you know, he had a huge impact on karate, not just in Britain, but all over the world as well. O'Neill was, you know, he was a top karate guy. He inspired a lot of people. That's interesting. And I like how you really ex- explained like that he does have a significance in terms of the timeline of Kyokushin's history. Um, now, there's a good question I have for you. So this year, you, you teamed up with Scott to do Real Talk. How did that happen? Yeah. And Scott's not with us today, but he's with us in spirit. So Scott, when you hear this, uh, just know like you're with us in spirit. It's just because it's just his schedule is just whack, but he'll even admit that it's crazy. All the way up there. In Alaska. <laughs> yes, in Anchorage. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right at the top. So, we, um, me and Scott known each other for a couple of years. And again, it started off with, um, you know, Scott started the Marshall Way page. Um, and how we got together was he started, I started the backstreet karate stuff, which was actually Scott that encouraged me to do it because I would do something uh, and I'd like send it to Scott. Like, oh my God, man, it's, it's just cool. You've got to share. I'm like, no, I don't, I'm not going to put it out there. You know, and I was very, I was Ronin Dojo then on my own. Um, and I was like, really? You think people would be interested in it? And he was like, yeah, you've got to put it out. So it was Scott that encouraged me through the Backstreet Karate page and to, to put these videos out. Me and Scott, we speak all the time. We've had some fantastic conversations. And what we said was, oh, we, we need to record these conversations because we're, we're covering great stuff here. People need to hear it. Um, but I've been on to him for about a year. Uh, I had the idea back a year ago. I'm like, why don't we do a little chat? Just me and you talking about that. Keeping it real and just talking about the things like we normally do in our normal conversations, right? Um, so it, I've been pestering him and pestering him. Come on, come on, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Uh, and in the meantime, is you know, a couple of other things have popped up. There's other people who have popped up doing it. And I'm like, we've got to get on it. We've got to do it. So he finally said, right, yeah, we'll do it now. We'll start it this year. So we, uh, you know, we called it Real Talk because it's basically us keeping it real and just talking about things that are happening. Uh, and then we, we've got a good chemistry. So we, we bounce off each other. We feel we both respect each other. But we're not like, oh, no, we're mates, so we talk, you know, like we're friends. So we got a, a good camaraderie in the conversation. Um, and, you know, we're eight episodes in. It's going well. We're getting a lot of feedback from it. Uh, we've just separated it from the Marshall Way mm-hmm. page to its own page, so the Real Talk uh, YouTube channel. So people make sure you subscribe to that so you're getting all the episodes so we can monitor it and we can see. Because, you know what I mean? If we keep doing this and you're only getting 10 views, four or five likes, it's like, well, the people are speaking. They're not interested in it. But we're not, you know, we're getting four, five, six hundred views. It's going up. We're getting likes. We're getting people commenting on us, getting people contacting us. It's growing. Uh, and we hope. It's going to grow into something great, you know. Eventually, we'll have guests on as well. We don't want we don't want to change the format. Scott does his long form podcast interviews on the Marshall Way. Real talk, short and sharp, half an hour chats. That's all we want to keep it to. We'll have guests on, and we'll have a chat to them, and we'll just be laid back, keeping it real. And then we want to build our platform, get more people involved, so that you know my plan. How I see it, then I'm like right. Eventually, down the line, when we've built the platform we want, we'll do a real talk roadshow and we'll travel around different places. We'll have a big seminar. We'll train, interview, train, interview. So that's where I see it going. That's what I want for it. That's really awesome. No, it's really good what you guys are doing. Like, I really like it. So, guys, please subscribe to Real Talk on YouTube. Uh, they're ra- as you know, we just got to raise the bar. Whether it's that show, whether it's Marshall Way, whether it's KRT, whether it's Kyokushin Shuffle, or my show, The Drew Experience. But I mean, look, the platform is yours today. I just wanted to say, like, we're doing. I feel like we're really doing such a good job. And what I really keyed in on there is what you said. I'm not like us, and you're a Shian, and I really think you know. It's like, I can't speak for every Xi'an, but there are some that have that godly complex where it's like, you know, it's like, I'm here, you're here. And I think when you come in, you like you, there's another one I have coming on Wednesday, but like, he's like, and he's like, but he's, that announcement's to come, but today the show is yours. But um, 
I really think people need to look at you as like a syllabus itself and be like, if I'm a Xi'an, why do I lose students? Why is it that I don't have my, my dojo growing or my association? Well, you're, you're putting yourself on a pedestal and it's like a cult leader and that's got to stop. Exactly. People do. Certainly. You think when you get them stripes, it becomes the cult, you're a leader. But a lot of people have got their stripes by just being around for a certain amount of time. Um, and, and I'm like, you know what? If, uh, you know, I had my fifth down last, was it last? No, year before last. Um, completely independent of any organization. My fifth down was presented to me by my peers, a group of other Xi'ans, because I'm independent. So I'm never going to grade anyone. It's never going to happen. I'm not interested. The only person I'm interested in receiving anything from is my Xi'an. We buffed them. So a group of black belts, uh, other Xi'ans, been monitoring what I'm doing and watching the development. I travel around, the te- well, not last year, but I travel all over Europe. I'm doing camps, I'm teaching, I'm doing seminars. I'm spreading the word, trying to take it back to Chin Soseki, Genesis Karate, you know, the sport karate, the knockdown is good, but don't forget what the purpose was, what I'm trying to spread. Um, so my fifth time was presented to me by my peers. It's not from any organization. I paid nothing for it. It's just a recognition from my peers of my work. And, and you know, so to me, that's, that's the most important grade I've had. It means more to me than any other grade that I've had because it's a, rec- it's a recognition, not a, you've put your time in, you've paid your two grand, go and do some punches and kicks, use your grade. Exactly. That's the problem. It's like, it's like, it kind of like, it's like, it's, if you really want to earn it and feel like you've earned it, see how the, you're just, you said your peers, like how you've impacted your peers, whether you're going to seminars, you're in kumites, you're volunteering. It's not just about doing the technique and, you know, a few fights in the dojo where you've been around and like, cause you're kind of, it kind of makes it, you're like a company man or woman. Like you have to really build, sell yourself in a sense. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like, so for example, like, when I get my black belt, like why it's like for me, what it means to me is like, because I use this podcast for it in a sense, because eventually when lockdown ends, I do want to go to the tournaments. I do want to be like a photographer, like interview the fighters. And that's going to show them like, Hey, you know what? He's doing more for the community because it's not just about going to showing up to the class, paying the membership fees and doing a few techniques. You have to do more outside. Yeah. The amount, the amount of Xi'ans that I've come across that never punch to the face, they never throw, they never grab, they never do any, any stand-up grappling at all. And you think, well, just what exactly is your fifth dan for? Or what exactly is your sixth dan for? Because you can't actually teach what he is, pulling hands, grabbing, anchoring, and hitting every time we do a basic punch. That's what we're doing. You don't know it and you're not teaching it. So what exactly is your grade based on? Just time served, just being there. Um, and that, that, uh, that's a bug bit with me. It's just like you walk around with your fifth dan, your sixth dan, or I even know seventh dan. You walk around with your seventh dan and your karate knowledge is very limited. You've never stepped outside your little knockdown bubble um, and developed and researched, which is what, as we said in one of our shows, what makes a good student? Why aren't you questioning things? Why aren't you researching and developing yourself? You know, you're, you've, been, you've been told one-on-one is two. That's what you've been told. But why can't you look outside and go, mm, well, actually, if you take away that and one-on-one, is 11 as well. It's another way of looking at it. But people are not doing that. They, they, they are, as we said, the followers are not students. Very true. I really love what you do, man. And I'm super happy that, you know, we got to connect and do this because, you know, you really, you know, when we spoke off the record after, like when you commented on one of my posts, I was like, I think I like this guy. Terry's my kind of guy, unfiltered, uh, honest. And even after, like, we just broke the ice right away. And that's what, and that's what I really love about you being a Shia. And you really are. There's like, there's only about, look, I've only had interactions with about, I've, I've interacted with Shians, but the Shians that I really love talking to, and I'm going to give their names here, okay? There's you, there's Junior Russo in Canada, 
There's uh, Felix. Shout out to Felix Tomaza. Super cool guy. I love yeah, talking very, to him. Very, very underrated guy, Felix. Very underrated guy. Um, the other one is uh, I've had an interaction with very positive, Shean Pierre Cataford. And uh, these, guys, these are examples of like just, and Jacques Dupont, where I had my first only French interview because I'm from Quebec, so we got to speak French. And you really, yeah. you really, it's like you can't let it get to you. You have to really understand like you have a, you are, you have to, you are being, you are in a sense serving the community in a sense. And that's what it is. You have to be a student always. You have to have that student mindset because you're meeting people from different walks of life. And I remember when I first started Kyokushin infamously, you know, I don't want to, it's not to sound like a victim here, but like I had once, cause like I'm, um, I am mildly like autistic. Like I do say like I'm on the spectrum and I had once sen sensei that said mm -hmm. it to me, are you slow in the head? Cause you don't understand the cat is you sure this is for you. And it's like, how do you say that to someone? And you have that ego. Like you have to understand you are a white belt and you come from a different walk of life. And I really think that's the thing with Kyokushin too. We have to keep it humane because everybody's path is different. Your path is different. My path is different. Scott's path is different. Uh, the KRT guy's path is different and Pinto's path is different. So we all have to have this collectivist, mentality of acceptance we have to include more and it's not to sound politically correct or you know social justice but we need to kind of understand everybody's different you know, you're right and again it is what we said on our episode living through the martial way what's the martial way basically not being a dick and just trying to live a better life and it's the same you know everyone has the fanciful idea of martial arts and karate of, you know all the black belts are great at accomplished wise warriors that are wise in the world and no there will be a lot of black belts who are dicks just you know they've trained they've done their time they've got their black belts they've got their stripes four fifth six dance and these people hide behind their grade they wear their sick down they stand out the front they never get involved they never train they never sweat with you and as i said before don't trust anyone that doesn't sweat with you because they stand out the front and they love to pontificate and walk around and, and give all the instructions. They don't get involved with you. They don't spar with you. They don't sweat with you. They don't do the push up with you. Or in my goal, do I do everything that everyone else does? That's what bonds us. I sweat like they do. I scream and shout at them, come on, let's do it. Boom. And then we feed off each other. So I don't just stand there, tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very true. I love what you said there. I definitely agree 100%. And uh, yeah, you know, you just keep doing what you do, man, because you're really bringing why the martial arts is don't be a dick. And it's like, I hate that. Now, like, I used to kind of be like, I used to be humble about it, you know, in terms of like, ah, I let it fly. But now it's like, I will never say bad stuff on my show. I keep that stuff for off the record. But I call bullshit when I see it. And I got that from you. So I want to say yeah. thank you. Thank you, because you and my coach, my uh, my teacher Mohammed, who's like a very like you know, you've seen my picture with him. Like Mo is like very like like what I got from him is if they do you wrong once, stay away from them. And what I got from you is, but if they keep doing wrong to you, and then they try to be your friend after being a dick to you, call them on their bullshit. You have to keep your distance because. Yeah. That's the thing. And I have to, and that's the thing where I see be a better man. You know, you're, I'm a working project, like you say, and I have times where it's hard for me to put up boundaries, but sometimes like I have people where they'll say like, you should get this guest on. Like I had a, my mom's cousin, like my, like, you know, like, it's like, like my, like, uh, so my mom's cousin knows nothing about martial arts, listens to one episode. Oh, can you tell them to like, stop swearing? And I, and this was a day where, you know, like it was like a bad day. And, you know, this is the day where it's like you picked the wrong day to like to, to you picked the wrong day to fuck with me. So I just yelled at her. I yelled on the speak. She was on speakerphone. Yeah. I was like, if you don't like the show, it's explicit for a reason. Don't watch. I say explicit. There's an E in there. It's not that hard. And you're not watching it, whether you're in my family or not, doesn't make a difference in my day or life. Because for me, it's about making an impact. And, ma and, some and it's the way I express myself. If you're not getting the guests for me, you're not helping me with the content creation, your opinion is irrelevant. But today you wanted to make your point. Well, guess what? I'm going to call bullshit on you. So in that case, shut the fuck up. Hey, it doesn't, 
it doesn't always get me friends and gets me into trouble, but I will call bullshit when I see it. Um, and the Kyokushin world is rife with bullshit. And, and people call it, see, so, so certain people will call me a hater and say, oh, you're always negative, you're always picking on people. I'm not picking on anyone, but if you're purporting bullshit, I will call you on and I'll say, no, you're wrong. That's not right. That's not correct. Um, and this is why. And like I said, I'm right until you prove me wrong. So if someone says to me, oh, Terry, listen, you're talking shit. And this is why. And I said, well, actually, yeah, you've changed my mind. I'll, ch I'll change. I'll change it then and go, actually, I was wrong on this. And this is a better way of doing it. This is a better way of thinking about it. I've been shown this way. And I'll adopt it as my own. You will never know any different. You think I came up with it. Mm -hmm. Very true. I love what you said there. So changing it to a positive. Which is that, is that adaptability. Mm -hmm. Very true. So changing it to a positive note, um, 2021, we're only two months in. What's, uh, what do you want? What's the goal for 2021 for you? Whether that's with you and what you're doing with Scott on uh, Real Talk. Well, I mean, business goals, personal goals, training goals, you know, there's lots to come in. I, business-wise, it's a very, very difficult time at the moment because you can't plan for anything. Mm -hmm. You can't have a structure. You can't set things up because we're in and out of lockdown. And, you know, my, I, I've got a commercial cleaning company. So when all the commercial buildings are in lockdown, there's not a lot for us to do. So we've had to come up with other ways just keep revenue coming in. I've got employees. I've got fans out. We've got to keep them ticking over. So that's presented challenges. Uh, so there's certain things we have to do that way. You know, I still work full time. I'm running the company. So that has a lot of my energy. Uh, plus this now is getting a lot of my energy. I'm on the phone till two o'clock in the morning, commenting, liking, sharing, putting the word out there. You've got to, as you know, you've got to put the work in excuse me you've got to put the effort in you can't just do a show and go yeah bang we're done the millions will come to us you've got to get it out and you've got to share it and it's got to be consistent it, so me and scott have said right we'll do, it. we'll do it for a year we'll bang it out for a year we'll put them out we're going to be you know we haven't missed the day we haven't missed time every tuesday every friday our show will go out and we'll keep doing it for a year and if at the end of the year like you said there's one or two likes, there's one or two views, then that's the market telling us, listen, no one wants to fucking listen to you. So shut up. And then, then we'll reassess what we're going to do. Maybe this, maybe we'll do something different. Exactly. Well, I love that, that I love that entrepreneurial mindset you have because Scott's amazing with like web design and all that. Like, and, that, and I need to talk to him about that because like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty challenged with technology. I can only turn on a computer, record, and I'm, I'm going to be getting a new MacBook soon for recording because this one's like I have is a decade old. It's like a Civic. It, it, it ages well, but you got to get a new one eventually. Um, and then you have the entrepreneurial mindset because you, you own company. You understand you got to put it out, put the work in. There's no sleep when you're a, when, when you're a content creator or owner of that content and I love that so um, I love to obviously you know as I said we're gonna do 45 minutes or so today because yeah but hey, listen, there's, no, there's no time limit on you know yeah. as long as you want Exactly. No, it's because I work today. That's why. So like, that's why like, I'm, I'm going clutch. Right. I'm clutch today. But I really want to thank you for coming on, Terry. And it was a huge honor to host you and Scott and Spirit. But you, but you especially, because like, you are such, I, I, love, I love what you're doing. And I want to thank you for inviting me to the pages you have. Um, you're, you're doing such a good job. And uh, I read your, I read a bit, I, I got Forever the Student. Uh, I haven't read all of it, but I know you're in there. So guys, Forever the Student by Patrick Pinto. If you get it, please read Terry Burkett's uh, story because Terry is... Terry is, 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 is himself and that's what we need in this art. We have to, you have to be yourself to, to succeed and grow. Um, where can people find you, Terry, if they want to connect with you? Cause I want to make sure after, t after when this episode gets, it's broadcasted, everything blows up. There's enough pot, six slices of pie and success to go around, whether it's my show, your show or others. Like we, we there's an, there's abundance for everybody. Like I said, we've got the Real Talk show. It goes out every Tuesday, every Friday. Um, 
the links to that are shared on the Marshall Way page, Scott's the Marshall Way. They're shared on my page, Backstreet Karate Ronin Dojo. It's shared in my group, which was called Ronin Dojo. But we've changed the name of the group now to Ronin Life because I want to start a trend. I want to start a hashtag trend or Ronin Life because people used to think, oh, Ronin, the loner, you want to be on your own, you don't want to interact with anyone. That's not what. For me, that's not what the Ronin life is about. So yes, Ronins were loners and they traveled around, they went from different place to place because there wasn't in servitude of employment. I look at it as a Ronin as being free. So I'm free to do whatever I want, to interact with whoever I want. I'm free to develop. I'm the captain of my own ship and the master of my own destiny to go wherever I want. That is what Ronin life is about, me. Not alone, but just being free. Very true. Very true. So, and the other platforms you have, are you on Instagram too? Like, because name all, name the yeah, other stuff too. So it's, yeah. yeah, Instagram. So it's Terry underscore Ronin Dojo. Uh, the Instagram is partly, it's about everything of me, really. Family life, karate, business. I tend to check everything on Instagram. The Backstreet Karate Ronin Dojo page, which is, all the karate stuff on there that's dedicated to karate and and re-understanding the purpose of karate the you mentioned earlier on the order of man page that was just a page that i set up uh just to put you know some cool motivational posters on there and things get a bit of interest because i think it's without getting into it too much and without upsetting anybody i do think that there is there is a battle against men at the moment. They call it toxic masculinity, but you know, I think it's toxic femininity. I think there's a battle against men at the moment. Every, you know, it, it's almost like it's wrong to be okay. It's wrong to be an okay, fit, strong, healthy, confident male. Wrong to do that. It's toxic masculinity. Um, and, and, I, and I don't, I think, Yes, if people, if people are, you know, they've got that, it's okay not to be okay. So, you know, if you're suffering from mental health and if you're depressed and you've got issues, it's okay to have issues. And it's okay to speak to people and get help. 100% of course. But it's also okay to be okay. If you've got no issues, if you're confident and you know where you're going in life and you've got focus and drive and determination, that's something to be celebrated shouldn't be looked upon as oh, it's toxic. So the order of man page, and it's not man, it's mankind, it's anyone, women as well. Because, you know, take my, my partner, Susie, she wanted to be a firefighter, she's a firefighter. She wasn't just a firefighter, she was the, the recruit of the course. She's also a personal trainer, all self-funded, all self-taught and done her own courses. She's also a mother, full-time housewife looks after the house and all of that sort of stuff as well. So she's very much a driven career woman. She knows what she wants. She's driven. And it, that, that's not a bad thing. That's not, oh, you're a man-hater, toxic femininity because you've got a career. They work both ways, husband and wife, left hand, right hand. We work together, not opposing each other. Awesome. I really love how it ended off here. So once again, guys, uh, this, that's, that's, uh, this is Sheehan Terry Burkett of Ronin Dojo, who does real talk, and he's a successful entrepreneur with other ventures. The episode will be up on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes real soon. So I'll make sure to send you the info before publishing because I want to make sure you're represented well. And Terry, I really once again want to thank you. It was, it was such an honor today. You know, like We're going to have to do a second part eventually, whether that's with me, you, and Scott, or me, you again. But uh, yeah, listen, man. Yeah, let's get uh, just give me and Scott and we'll work it out I mean you're Quebec he's yeah. Alaska yeah. <laughs> so we'll work the times out there um, we, we normally shoot the show it's around about 11pm midnight here when we normally shoot the show so I'm sure we can work it out get the three of us on and have a good chat about things I'm sure alright man well once again I want to thank you for coming on you have yourself an awesome day and keep being an awesome Shean father and business owner uh, take it easy Drew Good stuff.